Squats are an excellent exercise to develop strength and power in the legs. During the squat, we often hear coaches or trainers instructing a client to push through the heels during the return phase. But why is this? Is it an instruction to help clients maintain proper technique? Is it safer than alternative instructions? Or is it something else? Well, we're not quite sure. So let's take a closer look at the biomechanics of the hip, knee, and ankle during this exercise. For comparison, we'll also take a look at what happens during two alternative instructions. When the exerciser is instructed to push through the ball of the foot, and when instructed to push through the instep of the foot. Here is a biomechanical model of someone performing the squat. The blue arrow represents what's called the ground reaction force. As we can see, when the subject is instructed to push through the heels, the line of force is located toward the back of the foot. When instructing the subject to push through the ball, the line of force is closer to the toes. Finally, when pushing through the instep, the line of force is located somewhere between the previous two examples, in the center of the foot. By measuring this line of force and the motion of the exerciser's legs, we can calculate the differences between the three squat variations. This is a plot of hip torque over time. It illustrates, generally speaking, how hard the hip extensors, the glutes and the hamstrings, are working during the course of the exercise. The similarities here suggest that there is no major difference at the hip between the conditions. When we look at the same plots for the knee, again, we see little difference across the three conditions. In other words, there is no difference at the hip or knee, regardless of how one is instructed to push into the ground. Where we do see a significant difference, however, is at the ankle. When instructed to push through the instep or the ball of the foot, we see significantly greater ankle torque when compared to pushing through the heel. In other words, the plantar flexors, your calf muscles, are essentially eliminated from the exercise when pushing through the heel. The implications of this may be significant as the calves play an important role in walking, running, and maintaining balance. Realistically, all of these instructions have a purpose. But if instructing someone to push through the heels, we should be aware that it completely takes the calves out of the exercise. In this scenario, it would be wise to prescribe additional calf-focused exercises to ensure that these muscles are well-trained. If someone wants to strengthen the quads and glutes and avoid overstressing the calves, perhaps due to an injury, then pushing through the heels during squats is a great instruction to help accomplish this. This analysis shows us that something as simple as the exercise's instruction can have a significant effect on the exercise's outcomes. To help ensure that we see the desired results, this is something we should always be aware of when performing or coaching any exercise.